everyone and welcome to another MI Short here. Today we're going to be talking about fertilizer spikes. And oftentimes when we think about fertilizer spikes, we overlook the people that could actually be using them. Oftentimes we pass them off as being a beginner or someone that doesn't really like taking care of their garden and that's something for them. And you're right, it is something for them because that's very, it's a very efficient way of fertilizing. However, we often don't think of how well uh, they could work for us us experienced gardeners that are in our garden all the time, we pass it off and uh, we completely overlook it. And that was something that I made a mistake of because I had had these fruit trees here and I'd been fertilizing them pretty regularly. And I don't like to say that I don't, I mean, I don't get bored of fertilizing. I enjoy doing it. It's something that is just part of being out in the garden. It's a task that I like to do. But often I find times uh, I kind of neglect my fruit trees. I'm, I'm gonna admit, I, I don't always fertilize them as often as I should. And so one thing that I wanted to try this year specifically was fertilizer spikes. And so I, uh, I did that because I wanted to make sure that my plants were getting fed, but I didn't really always have the time to keep feeding them because they are really heavy feeders when they're trying to grow uh, from a, a new stage here. Because as you know, I planted these trees here two years ago in a bare root. So they're still in that stage of getting a, uh, an adequate root system to support uh, number one fruit and number two a lot of foliage so they're they're doing very well but the thing is is the reason why they're doing so well is because I finally had broken down to using fertilizer spikes and little to my surprise they're doing phenomenal and uh, the first year I had been using just compost tea and so I would, I would continue watering and every single time I'd water I would fertilize that worked out great but again it used so much time this year I've only fertilized one time. I used four fertilizer spikes. Um, I'm also, my, I'm gonna mention, I got contacted by Winchester Gardens asking me if I would test their fertilizer spikes. And I thought to myself, well, what the heck? I've been wanting to use fertilizer spikes. They want me to try out their fertilizer spikes. So it's a win-win situation. So I tried out their fertilizer spikes. And this is a organic berry fertilizer spike. It's a two, three, four. And uh, it's great for strawberries and blue, blueberries and raspberries, but I decided I would try it for my fruit trees because they didn't send me something for my fruit trees, but I figured berries are fruits, these are fruit trees, whatever, I might as well try it. And um, a little to my surprise again, they're doing fantastic, they're doing amazing. And I've only had to fertilize, like I said, one time. So I'm really pleased and I'm, I'm due for another fertilizing. So I'm going to fertilize again. I'm gonna show you how I fertilize with them and just seriously how simple it is. And then I'm also going to show you what I like to use for my tomato plants because I have to, some tomato plants in pots here and I decided I'd try it out because they sent me some stuff for tomatoes and they're due for another refertilizing as well. It's been three months, so um, it does last a long time. It's very effective. I would seriously recommend trying it out if you're someone that uh, is busy, someone that's traveling, a new, uh, just a beginner gardener that is not f uh, familiar with fertilizing, or even the experienced gardener that um, sometimes can neglect a few plants because it does happen to everyone. So I have my fertilizer here and you get a ton in these bags too. I was actually shocked with how many you get. I mean, they give you a lot in here for the uh, amount that you pay. Um, I obviously got these for free. Thank you, obviously, courtesy of Winchester Gardens. I appreciate that. Um, but I apply three uh, to the base of these plants. Number one, because they're fruit trees and, uh, and you're supposed to give them, uh, here's the diagram here. They give you some directions on the back. Uh, but it says for strawberries, you're supposed to give them one spike on each side of the plant. So I figure a strawberry plant's pretty small. Uh, an Asian pear is pretty big here. So let's, um, so let's put three, why not? And so I just take them and I literally just stick them right in the ground there. And they're spikes, so they're a spear shape. And they, they literally just go right in the ground without a problem at all. I just put them in kind of a triangular pattern around the base of each plant and they, um, and they go right in. And so then all I do is when I water, it gives a slow release fertilizer to the, um, to the root system. And uh, I gotta admit, this plant's really loving it. And so we're here with the tomatoes and I thought I'd show you guys a really quick test that I was doing for three months and I decided I would let it go for three months and see how it worked. This plant here I have with just compost. I used compost from the, um, from the compost pile and in this pot here I have compost from the compost pile and I have some of Winchester Gardens vegetable spikes. And I'm just using their uh, recommended amount per plant. This is two spikes to a plant. 
So I just take them and I literally just, again, take the spike, stick it in about two or three inches away from the base of the plant, I go over to the other side, about two to three inches from the base of the plant, and every single time I water, it fertilizes. Now I want you to come in as I, well first I'm gonna give this one, this plant some fertilizer here, uh, because it, um, it could use it. And I'm gonna show you the difference that these fertilizer spikes make. And they're not very strong. I mean, it's a 466, it's all organic, so it's terrific. And since I'm an organic gardener, it aligns right with what I do. So I like them like that. Um, but I also like the results that I'm seeing. And so definitely come on and check this out because this is really surprising. And um, I'm actually shocked because number one, pot size is smaller, which you'll see. And number two, production is actually terrific. So check this out. So as you can see, the pot size here and the pot size here. It is about uh, maybe two inches in diameter larger. I'd say, I think this one's a 12 inch pot, and that one's a 14 inch pot. So um, it's larger, it holds more compost. So you'd think that there'd be a healthier plant in this pot right here. This is using pure compost, 100% pure compost. And then I have uh, vermiculite and perlite added in with it for aeration. Then over here, I had the same compost mixture same compost mixture, but I added the two spikes. And look at these tomatoes here. They are flowering. They're loaded with flowers. They have fruit. There's another little one coming on right, right in there. But look at also the color of the leaves. Very dark green, healthy leaves. And if you come over here, you have one truss of tomatoes, not bad. Um, but look at the leaves. They are uh, further spread apart. They are, they're more sparse, it's a little laggier. As you can see, there's a definite health difference, but also in the color, it's quite a bit uh, more yellow, yellowish green. And so um, here, I'm gonna pick a leaf off, just to contrast. There you go. So the, the results are very evident and um, I'm, very, I'm very, actually very surprised, to be honest, uh, because I always thought my compost was pretty good, but then, hey, you know, you had a fertilizer spike, and um, I'm, pretty, I'm, I'm pretty shocked with the results, so that's great to know. And last but not least is my, uh, my peach here. My peach is doing exceedingly well. It actually died back. I was so scared. It had a case of uh, verticulum wilt and um, or v verticillium wilt and verticillium wilt happens on stone fruits they're very prone to it but the problem is is that a lot of people are noticing that the plant starts out really healthy and then all of a sudden will randomly in the middle of the summer start wilting back turning brown and it just starts dying and there's nothing you can do about it but i found out the one thing you can do about it is by pruning about two to three inches below the affected area you can actually save it. I, I was really surprised. This thing came back amazing. And I'm telling you what, I had probably 10% of the plant left and it's now bigger than it was last year. And also what I'm going to do is just keep giving it these fertilizer spikes. I give it three, again, just like I do with the other ones. I give it three right around the base and, um, and it just feeds them terrifically. So um, I'm gonna keep doing this because hey, three months and you don't have to feed again until those three months are up. That's pretty good. Um, in my opinion, that's, that's actually a very impressive. So I like that. I like the aspect that it's, um, you know, you don't have to have constant maintenance on your plants because I think um, time, is, time is valuable for everyone, including myself. And, um, and so it's one of those things that if I can buy a little bit of time somewhere, I'll definitely buy it. So there you go. That is fertilizer spikes. Hopefully you all enjoyed. I would definitely recommend checking out um, Winchester Gardens. I'll post a couple links to where you can get them. Um, I'm gonna post a link to their website as well. Also, thank you Winchester Gardens for sending them in. I certainly would not have had the results if it was not for you. Um, but yeah, so thank you very much. I appreciate it. And until next episode, this is Emma Gardner reminding you to grow big or go home. I'll talk to you guys next episode. See ya, bye.